Back to follow-up segment tonight, as we've been reporting, actor Tom Hanks has co-produced an HBO miniseries about the Pacific Theater in World War II. And for some reason, Mr. Hanks has injected racial politics into the promotion for the film. The Pacific uh, now is coming out where it represents a, a, a war that was of racism and terror. And what it seemed as though the only way to complete one of these battles in these small specks of, uh, of, of rock in the middle of nowhere was to, I'm sorry, kill them all. Uh, and does that sound familiar uh, to what we today. might be going through today? So uh, it's, is there anything new under the sun? Now, it's hard for me to believe that Mr. Hanks actually thinks racism played a major part in the Japanese situation or the current war on terror. We've invited Mr. Hanks on the factor. He has declined. But joining us now from Mountain View, California, Dr. Jennifer Burns, who teaches history at the University of Virginia. Racism and terror, you had to kill them all. Yeah, you had to kill them all in the Japanese theater because they wouldn't surrender. All right? The code was you don't surrender, you fight to the end. So you had to kill them all or you would be killed. Now, surely a guy like Tom Hanks knows that. So I don't, I don't know what he's getting at. I don't know what the point is. Do you, Professor? Well, I think what uh, Mr. Hanks might be doing is something we historians call presentism. That is looking at the past through the present. And it usually doesn't yield uh, very clear thinking on either level. Presentism. Okay, so he's looking, he's looking at uh, the World War II theater uh, based upon what's happening today. But even in what's happening today, he's fallacious. If, if any American thinks that the, the war on terror is racist driven, they're out of their minds, Professor. We were attacked by the jihadists for no reason at all, zero reason. They killed 3,000 people on 9-11. We have replied to that. It's not racism. If, if, if any group in the world had attacked us, we'd be doing the same thing to them. White, yellow, right. and red, I think what... it wouldn't matter. What, what uh, uh, Mr. Hanks' statement leaves out is a, a huge amount of context that the war in the Pacific, like the war on terror, unfolded in a geopolitical context, and it happened after a surprise attack, um, which really radically changed the way Americans thought about war and their willingness to engage but in here, war. But here's so, how bad it is, Professor. Um, we have a couple of million Muslims in the United States. They haven't been, by and large, bothered. There hasn't been that's very, right. very that's few a huge incidents, difference. very few incidents, okay? So, but this is what upsets me about this whole thing. So you've got this guy, Hanks, who has some power. He's got power. He's on all programs. He won't come on the Fox News Channel, which in itself tells you something, because this audience here is by far and away the largest audience. And it would watch this audience, his series, miniseries. They are interested, the right. Fox viewers, right. in that. But he won't come here, because I believe this guy is so left-wing driven now that he's just a loon although i could be wrong there might be something here that i don't understand about him which is why i brought you on now presentism now, or whatever i mean there's got to be something driving this go ahead well what i think is uh too bad is that he missed one of the most interesting parallels between the pacific experience and what's happening today which is after the pacific war we embarked on our first attempt a successful attempt at nation building and that's really what we're doing today in afghanistan and iraq and a 10-part series on nation building in japan um, why it was successful what we did right that would be a real contribution to understanding some of the issues we're dealing with in the present day Okay, but I think this is HBO miniseries is a contribution because it shows the heroism uh, of Americans and what they had to deal with in the Pacific Theater, and they don't teach that in high schools. You know, you know, you're that's right. You and know I the think dopey the, kids the coming into your classroom now in the <laughs> University of Virginia. I mean, they don't. So I, 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 I'm not denigrating, and Spielberg's involved with this miniseries too. These are yeah. these are very very talented men who I think are doing a good thing with these presentations but it's hanks himself that bothers me because he has right. power people listen to him go now i would say that the parallel between uh the soldiers experience in world war ii and what's happening now i think that is important to draw out and i think to the extent the series does that um, it is making a real contribution. The other parallel here that I would point to is the, the element of a surprise attack, the, uh, oh, you, the analogy between 9-11 and between the attack on Pearl Harbor. So both of these are really the instigating cause of the war rather than the way Hanks is describing it as some type of culture clash.
backlash um, and really leaving out the, the instigating effort or the instigating incident that precipitated us joining the war. Do you believe that there was an element of racism in our uh, strategy to defeat the Japanese and or our strategy to defeat the jihadists? Do you believe there is an element of racism in the strategy? I think the driving factor is the bigger tactical considerations in the war. Um, that is uh, regaining the Pacific and um, hemming in Japan, which was trying to expand its imperial empire, and uh, in today's context, trying to uh, eliminate safe havens for terrorism. I think that's the driving motivation. No. Now, what happens on the ground, how it plays out, um, that's much harder to comment on, but I don't think it plays the kind of role that Hanks is saying it does. We appreciate it, Professor. Thanks very much. Plenty more has a fact that moves along this evening. Dan Rather a bit upset over his Obama watermelon analysis. We'll take a look at that. And Glenn Beck on why he gave the loopy Congressman Massa so much time on his program. We hope you stay tuned for those reports. In Beck's segment tonight, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters has been listening to the Tom Hanks debate, and I want to get his take on it. The Colonel joins us from Washington. He is the author of the brand new book, Endless War, Middle Eastern Islam versus Western Civilization, which I highly recommend. I finished it today. I said, so what do you think is behind this Hanks thing? Um, historical illiteracy. I mean, apart from his commendable interest in World War II, Tom Hanks has no idea uh, what he's talking about. And even, Bill, even the nonsense about our war in, on terror being racist, Bill, Al-Qaeda comes in every color in the rainbow. There are black, white, red, yellow, and brown Al-Qaeda members. So it's just absolutely silly. But back to this whole issue of Hollywood liberalism, always seeing imputing horrible motives to the United States. Um, we're always the bad guys. I would love to see Mr. Hanks and Mr. Spielberg make an honest film about the Bataan Death March. All right, but look, to be fair to Spielberg and Hanks, this miniseries, <clears throat> by all the accounts and all the reviews, is an homage to the American soldier. It, 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 it is a tribute, so it's not anti-American. And it no, shows the bravery, and, and, and young people need to see this, by the way, because as I said, they don't learn about it in school anymore. So I, I applaud Hanks and Spielberg for putting this stuff out. But I don't get is why Hanks wants to inject racism into two wars, Japan and the war on terror, where racism clearly does not exist. We had to kill a Japanese, as you well know, because the Japanese wouldn't surrender, period. They wouldn't put their arms in the air, and if they would kill you. And in the jihadists, if they were Thais, Burmese, and they had attacked us, we'd be doing the same thing to them. You've got to kill them. They won't negotiate, and they won't stop. Now, what is it about that simple thing that Tom Hanks doesn't understand? Well, I think there are several things. One, for the... These, these kind of people, the past was always somehow magically better, and today it just stinks. It's just like that. Now, I, I do believe, Mr. Hanks and Spielberg, their interest in this is commendable, and Band of Brothers was terrific. That's great. But then when you get to the idea that, well, today's soldiers somehow aren't as good, or they're not the greatest generation, or we're racists, it's just crazy. In fact, ironically, the real really interesting contrast, rather than parallel, between World War II and the Pacific and the, the battle against terrorists, uh, Islamist terrorists, is that in the Pacific, we responded to savagery with ruthlessness of, ruthlessness of our own, and we won. In the war against terror, we've responded with lawyers, and we're not doing so well. All right, that's an interesting point. Now, let's get